The throttle actuator motor, since there's no mechanical linkage between the accelerator pedal on the engine, a th motor must be used to move the throttle plates. It's a DC operated motor and it's controlled by the ground side switching predominantly. But there's some other switching that gets a little more complicated we'll have to show you. Battery positive is usually constant and the ground is duty cycled, varied off and on for a controlled opening. Now here's the way pulse width modulated duty cycle looks and the amount of time is compared to high and low to come up with a duty cycle. The top one there, we're high 90% of the time and low 5%. With a minus duty cycle, this is a 5% duty cycle. And this one is a 50% duty cycle. And the bottom one is a 90% duty cycle. That's looking minus duty cycle the time the signal is low. This is with ground side switching. Now, we have these various numbers, but in most instances, theoretically, the duty cycle is going to be greater than 50 is used to open the throttle. Duty cycles less than 50 is used to let the throttle close. It requires a duty cycle greater than 50 to open against the spring and to pull it up into a normal position. That's the basic operation. Now, a direct DC voltage cannot be used because we'd be driving the motor back and forth. It's too slow. It can't change fast enough. And it only rotates 90%. So the DC motor would eventually hit against the shaft and eventually burn out. Here are some of the motors as we look at on actual engines. Sometimes you see them underneath panels protecting them from the elements and, and where well, you can't see them. Here's one we took apart. We see the insides. Let's rotate this. We can get a better look close up. We could go through all the parts and pieces here, but basically what we're looking at is that spring. The motor is predominantly closed by spring action, meaning the assumption is when we lower the duty cycle, the spring is going to pull the motor closed. We'll show you what happens when that doesn't happen. But notice this doesn't move very far. There's only a small arc that moves in. The processor, if it recognizes that the throttle plate isn't closing quickly enough, or it isn't closing at all, it's stuck, it can reverse the motor to help the throttle close electronically. We told you that we're going to start off with a fairly basic system. We're going to duty cycle ground, but there's additional switching required. Well, we go to looking, we get things like this. We go to looking at things and say, wow, here's one with two B pluses and two sets of grounds. How would we use that? Well, predominantly, we work with one of them. They're hooked up and we duty cycle the ground in order to set the throttle opening. But if we have a situation where the motor is stuck, we can reverse it and force it to close. So this is the safety. Remember, safety, safety is always the concern with electronic throttling. Other ones, we have ones that look like this. They move back and forth, and we can have them that switch between and duty cycle and reverse to open the motor Here's what the voltage looks like on the motor and the throttle position sensor voltage. The blue trace is throttle position. The red trace is the voltage supplied to the motor, the duty cycle, if you would. We have a duty cycle here. In this particular case, is forcing it open when it's high. It's a high side switch. If you'll notice, that blue trace down there, throttle position sensor, has a little bit of noise. That's because we're constantly working duty cycle against the spring. This is to make the system responsive. It's not going to be the smooth, flat line you're used to seeing. It will have some noise in it. Don't worry about it. That is normal. Here is the throttle open wide. The TPS has gone much higher. We're looking at this duty cycle. How much time is it low and what percentage of time is it high? This is what's driving the system. Now, what do we do if it doesn't move? Well, there's a couple things we've got to worry about. Uh, if it's bound up and sticky and mechanically bound, that's a different problem. Does the motor move? Well, if it doesn't, you need to come back and take a note. Now, we're going to be working with this schematic, but there's some things we've got to know about this schematic. Some GM schematics we have found, no matter which manufacturer's 
system we look at have misidentified some of the things on the tech, the throttle actuator controls on some of the trucks. What's indicated is the APP signal, the accelerator pedal position, is really the motor control throttle position sensor. That's the blue trace down here we're looking at. What's indicated as the throttle position is really the motor control. In this particular vehicle, the APP goes directly to the PCM. Just be aware that some of the stuff you're looking at is going to be a little confusing. It's diagnosed by using known good throttle position sensors and engine load sensors. The computer is going to diagnose this for you and set a trouble code. But it has to have the right load factors and engine RPM. Why is this important? Well, you can't have bad mass flow, bad crankshaft position sensors, and a range of number of other things we're going to be using for this diagnostic. And the other thing you can be aware of is you've got to be sure you understand the failure modes. They could cause you to think there's a motor control problem. And the motor may not be moving because the PCM is not commanding it to move because it's identified a failure. So there's not much to do. The PCM is automatically going to diagnose frozen sticking motors. If you don't think the motor is moving, make sure the PCM has decided it's not going to move the motor and has another reason. And let the PCM do the majority of the diagnostics for you.